I'm oh, ugly I'm and I'm proud. When it comes down to wanting a car that's a real all-in-one package that you can drive all year round in any weather at any time, a trick all-wheel drive system is going to be that ticket to that take it anywhere, do anything attribute. But what if you want something a little more than that? What if you want a car that can go anywhere and do anything, plus be fun to drive, inspire confidence, be easy to modify, nice to look at, and be quick enough to make you feel like you're playing Dirt 5 in real life? Well then boy, do I have the list of cars for you, because today we're gonna show you the best all-wheel drive bargains that you need to buy right now before they get expensive. But before we jump head first into this one, we gotta hit you with the plug. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe, because our team works extremely hard to bring you guys daily content. Give the video a thumbs up, it helps us get in front of other car enthusiasts just like yourself. And if you ever need anything, wheels, tires, or suspension, come see your boy over at FitmentIndustries.com. We have over a million different wheel and tire packages, ceramic coating, plus accessories and merch. And if you package them together, we're gonna mount, balance, and ship those bad boys to you for free. And if you like oddball cars and wanna see some behind the scenes content here at FitmentIndustries.com, go give me a follow on the old Instagram at SeanB.FI. Let's get started. When it comes to fun, functional all-wheel drive cars, it would be absolutely impossible to overlook one of the most popular all-wheel drive cars of all time, the Subaru WRX. The Subaru WRX is the absolute epitome of being that fun, boosted, capable, and easy to modify car. And these cars have tons and tons of rally heritage that's been worked into the engineering of these cars. Now, the cheapest way to get into a full-on turbocharged WRX is obviously going to be the oldest one that we got stateside, and that would be the Bug Eye or the 2002 and 2003 WRX. Overshadowing this bargain rally car is absolutely any generation of STI, but with STIs being much more expensive with prices even on the rise for your Blob and your Hawkeyes, I really think the 227 horsepower turbocharged 2 liter 2002 to 2003 WRX is going to be the next one on the up and up, and it's genuinely a good car on a great platform. It's easy to modify, MA Performance makes a ton of parts for these cars, and the classic round headlight fog light setup is starting to move away from that aged look and starting to become, dare I say, classic. And for this generation, you could actually get a wagon variant that's much more practical and rare. Decent enough examples of these cars can be had in the five dollars to $8,000 range and are pretty well at the bottom of their depreciation curve. Although keeping one on the road usually involves a few horror stories about Subaru problems. But arguably one of my favorite affordable all-wheel drive cars of all time is probably gonna be the Mark IV Volkswagen R32. The R32 takes that GTI formula and turns it up to 11 and adds an all-wheel drive system. Sure, there's lack of rally heritage on this platform, but this is one of the most fun to drive hatchbacks I've ever driven. The 3.2 liter VR6 makes for a smooth and torquey power band. The sound itself it makes is entirely out of this world. The handling is beyond confident and it looks absolutely stunning. They're also pretty rare and have the best seats to ever come in a factory car, ever. And while the interior materials aren't exactly the best, this era of special edition Volkswagens did a fantastic job at making the interior look and feel just just good. They dated extremely well and it makes tons of sense ergonomically. Anyways, modifications here aren't as friendly, say, as a turbocharged platform. The only way to bump up power a reasonable amount is to go ahead and boost it. But even with only 240 horsepower, the car puts the power down in such a fashion that it feels really quick and agile on its feet, especially with some higher flowing exhaust and a good tune. The Mark IV R32 is really one of those cars that under promises and then over delivers. If you haven't driven one of these things, you need to. These cars haven't really ever been particularly cheap, but reasonable examples are starting to demand increasing price tags. But you can grab a high mile car that needs a little bit of TLC for ten dollars to $12,000, and you're not likely gonna lose any money on it. Now, if you don't like giant heavy automatic sedans, this one's probably not gonna be for you. But if you like big power numbers for not a whole lot of money, the Ford Taurus Show is definitely a great choice. Obviously, this one isn't gonna be a great handler, but what this one is gonna do better than the others and why it found its way on this list is to cruise. These things can stack on miles, and although the interior is a bit dated, the seats are extremely comfortable, and you can pack these things full of four adults and some luggage and not be uncomfortable. Empowering this big domestic boat is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with 365 horsepower. Being turbocharged, you can get that power down low and couple that with some basic bolt-ons, you can make a lot 
of power. Now, these things don't exactly sound great, but it's an awesome bargain when you consider the comfort and how quickly these cars can accelerate. There's a ton of these cars out and about with 100,000 miles under that $10,000 mark, which absolutely blows my mind. This is a lot of car for the money. Next up is gonna have to be the absolutely bonkers E92 BMW 335XI. Now, when I say bonkers, I'm not necessarily referring to the cars super like, pun intended, three liter twin turbo inline six that puts down an eager 300 horsepower but more so the fact that there was ever a point in modern history that an auto manufacturer offered us this kind of package. With automakers quickly running away from using manual transmissions over the last 20 years, it absolutely blows my mind that any German luxury car maker even offers a manual transmission at all, let alone with an optional all-wheel drive system. And I say E92 because in my opinion, it just looks better. But you can also get the E90 sedan in this configuration as well. And I get it, you're probably thinking, yeah, but N54 problems, and I hear you, but this platform really isn't something to be slept on. Sure, you have to media blast the valves every so often, have expensive high pressure fuel pump issues or vanos failures, leaking injectors and catastrophic turbo failures. But while these cars can be problematic in some regard, when these issues are addressed, these cars are damn near unstoppable. The bottom ends are extremely stout and they take very well to added boost. And it's probably gonna be the cheapest way to go ahead and make 500 horsepower on this list. If you have some mechanical ability and know how to use YouTube, you're going to be just fine. Anything all-wheel drive DSM is another one that I really, really like. Your 1G and 2G eclipses, talons, and lasers. I mean, come on, what's not to love about a 2-liter Evo engine in a small, lightweight, all-wheel drive, two-door hatchback body style? By today's standards, the 200 horsepower doesn't exactly seem like a whole hell of a lot, but these cars were pretty serious when they came out, and parts are extremely plentiful to take these things to the next level very quickly. While a nearly 30-year-old platform like the 1G probably Probably doesn't sound super appealing. What really sells me on this is the I think it's about to go up in value theory. When these cars came out, they made some big waves and they sold a ton of them. I remember just 10 years ago, these cars were still all over the place bullying V8s and doing it for very cheap. But as of late, the good ones sort of went away and the junk ones, well, they died off. And now you're starting to see an influx in price as supply becomes more limited. These cars are also getting to the age where they're legally considered to be classic or collector cars. I give it about five years before you start to see these cars demanding serious money. So with that prediction, you can get into a really nice example of one of those cars for under about $10,000, and you can probably own it for free as demand starts to exceed the cost of keeping it on the road. Something a lot of people end up sleeping on because they just straight up never knew it existed is the Mazda Speed 6. That's right, people. Mazda took their Mazda 6 sedan and slapped in that 2.3 liter turbocharged engine from the Speed 3, and they gave it an all-wheel drive system with a manual transmission. It's basically a more comfortable WRX. Because where Subaru focused on raw performance, the Speed 6 was still supposed to be Mazda's higher end, more luxury oriented sedan, just with more power and a little bit more aggressive face. So if the interior quality of a Subaru is what's keeping you away, this is the next best choice in my opinion. And with 275 horsepower, these cars are pretty damn quick right out of the box. They take very well to modifications and make quite the sleeper since nobody knows what they are. In fact, the only reason I actually learned about these cars is because when I used to drive around in my turbocharged five cylinder Volvo on E85 thinking I was hot I got my ass handed to me by a Speed 6 and it absolutely blew my freaking mind. Do not sleep on these cars. But maybe even sleepier than that would have to be the 2004 to 2007 Volvo S60R. All wheel drive, six speed manual transmission, 300 horsepower from a 2.5 liter five cylinder that sounds like a goddamn Audi R8 and the freaking gate clusters are blue. Now, that engine sits out front of the front axle, so naturally it's a little bit nose heavy and can have an understeering problem. But these cars are such a nice place to be. They're super fun to drive hard and they can double as a daily driver any day of the week. They make WRX STI power out of the box and have a large aftermarket support and fly completely under the radar and will garnish zero negative attention where it matters most. Outside of a couple typical issues, these cars are pretty robust just like any other Volvo. Whereas I can't really see these things appreciating in value anytime soon, I do believe they have hit the bottom of their depreciation curve and won't lose any money if you buy one within reason. You can actually go pick up a really nice example of a tastefully modified S60R for under $10,000. Volvo's all wheel drive system will get you through any weather, any time of the year. A very well-rounded choice here for the guy looking for something a little less flashy and a little more classy without giving up that fun. And lastly, one of my favorite affordable all-wheel drive cars to ever exist. The B5 chassis Audi S4 is undoubtedly the most fun 
well-rounded, best-looking all-wheel drive, fun-having car to ever exist with an entry-level price point. Now, I will say owning a B5 S4 isn't gonna be for your average enthusiast. There is a lot of little things that will nickel and dime you literally to death on these things if you don't have a connection in the community and a moderate engine transmission and electrical knowledge. But when you get past of all that, you're left with a twin turbo, 250 horsepower, 2.7 liter V6, famous Audi Quattro all-wheel drive system stuck into one of the, in my opinion, most well-aged automotive designs in the last 30 years. The proportions are perfect. The design elements are aggressive yet classy and subtle. The way they engineered the sizing of the vehicle is just so damn perfect. The ergonomics and the design of the interior is just draw-droppingly well laid out. It's just it's perfection. And the sound these things make is right up there with the VR6. And the power these cars can make is similar to that of the 335, albeit a little more difficult and a little more expensive. And despite the entire engine hanging in front of the front axles, Audi somehow designed the chassis that still feels completely predictable. So much so that its tendencies to understeer under heavy abuse is completely irrelevant to how this car can make you feel. And while it's still a more classy choice to the performance-oriented enthusiast car, it's still recognized by just about everybody as a very special piece of 2000s automotive history. Now, as of late, these cars have started to tick up in value for a clean example, with sub 100,000 mile cars getting into the mid and high teens and low mile cars selling into the mid and high 20s. But you can still get a really nice higher mile B5 S4 in the seven to $12,000 range with real basket cases sitting at that four to $5,000 mark. But mark my words, the B5 S4 was born to be a classic and prices are gonna start accelerating very soon. And if you get into one before that train leaves the station, you can get into a fun, capable, comfortable car for a reasonable amount of money. But that about wraps it up for this one, guys. I hope I was able to teach you something or even spark a little bit of desire for something you didn't even know you wanted just yet. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the subject. Make sure you guys are subscribed and getting notifications to stay in the loop with all the crazy stuff we're doing. And of course, don't forget to head over to fitmentindustries.com for any and all of your wheel, tire, and suspension needs. I'm Sean, Sean B. F on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't hate me. Doses.